We're going to start our discussion of details at the horizontal fuel conditioning module. It's going to consist of a fuel pump, which is very critical. I'll show you just how critical in a short while. The fuel filter, which is our first major filter after we've gone through the in-tank filters. The fuel water separator and the water in switch and fuel switch to alert the driver to the water in the fuel. Fuel drain to release the water out of the bottom of the, and a fuel heater to heat the fuel up to keep it from waxing. And the diesel thermal recirculation valve, which is going to be used to determine when we recirculate this warm fuel back to the tank. Starting in through here, we have a filter element. It's located here on the side of the horizontal fuel conditioning module. It's serviceable. You remove it and replace it. Let's go in and look at the fuel heater is up on the right. Water and fuel sensors are up there. And we have our fuel pump out on the left. Let's go back and have a look at this and break it down. Here's removing the filter. Let's look at the fuel pressure and how we get fuel pressure. First, we have a fuel pump that is serviceable. We're going to be pulling fuel in through the fuel supply to the HFCM, running it through the fuel pump, and sending it out to the fuel supply to the engine to the secondary fuel filter housing. We can measure that at the secondary fuel fill housing. Here's 50. It must be the original spring in there. To read this, we'd be reading 60 to 70 if we had the revised spring. The reason for checking fuel pressure is we cannot have an air pocket in our hydraulic injectors. If we do, low pressure can cause air bubbles, which can cause hammering, which will destroy the injector, as you see on the right there. We'll go more into that later, but just so you understand why important this is. If the pressure should fall below 45 PSI, the intensifier piston in the injector won't have enough fuel to dampen the stroke, and it can damage the injector. This is why we update it. Why want the new spring? And this is why we spend time testing the fuel pump with a lab scope. We can hook it up in several places under the hood. We found this green wire right here under the hood coming up just above the firewall. Here's what we're actually testing. We're over here on our right, and we're checking the wire going to the fuel pump from the underhood fuse box. Here's a schematic of what we're looking at. As you can see, we have the different color codes. We're getting 5 amps on this, which is a normal amperage we'd be looking for. Some bad ones, like this one, for instance, goes all the way to zero at times. is very erratic. This is an extremely erratic fuel pump. We do not want that to happen. It's hard to check fuel pumps because it turns off in two seconds after you turn the engine on. Well, we can go to our bidirectional here, and we, we've selected here, and we can turn the fuel pump off and on right here so we can do the testing with our current probe and not have to have the engine running. And again, we're going to talk more about that later. Now, we suggest you add fuel pressure tester to your annual inspections. It should not be low. As we say, it can destroy the injectors. Our first filter that is serviceable is 10 microns. This is finer stuff that got through some of the stuff in the in-filter tanking. It's a replaceable. It's here in the housing. Once the filter, the fuel enters the, the filter, it is separated, and the water falls to the bottom of the HFCM right down here. And we're able to drain that water out through a drain, which should be serviced. We know we need to drain it because we get this water and filter sensor that lights the lamp on the, on the dash for the driver. This is an example of our water and filter sensor. This particular sensor has some green corrosion, which is causing it to act like a short. It's a simple circuit that water is conductive. It closes the elements between the sensors and causes the light to come on. Right over there is the circuit. Here's the drain. There's the part number. One of the things that happen is sometimes people over-tighten this drain plug. It fits in fairly loosely. It's got an O-ring, so it doesn't have to make a snug metal-to-metal -metal contact. If someone has damaged it, there's the part number you need to replace it. Open this up and drain out the fluid until there's no water left and you can discard the water. Fuel remaining in the pressure regulator at the secondary engine-mounted air filter comes in from the HFCM. The diesel thermal recirculation valve either allows the fuel to return to the tank if it's warm enough or returns it to the unfiltered side of the fuel filter if it needs to warm up. What we're trying to do is run fuel back to the engine as it's warming up, and then once it's warmed up, we start sending it back to the tank. We're going to do that when it's between 50 and 80 degrees. We'll be warming it back to the tank. It opens, starts recircling back the fuel pump at 50, and is fully open at 80 degrees Fahrenheit trying to warm it up. 